I'm going to start off with saying that I don't think there's ever been a motherfucker that looked good from this underhead angle I'm going with here. I think every nigga looks washed, old and dusty in this fucking angle. But anyway, the point being, I just realized I never did a reaction video <laughs> for Not Like Us. The best song in the entire beef. And I've been playing this song. I've played this song at least like 20 times like the last day. <laughs> so, I've been playing the show that damn song recently. I've been playing it crisply more. It's like the stock of fucking Bitcoin or some shit. So I had to do one more video. I, I really don't know how I want to do this. I got the, the camera or the phone out. Because I'm like, I don't even feel good doing a proper like laptop setup. But I think what I would like to say... I'll preface this for saying I think Kendrick won conclusively. So anybody's like looking for like a kind of a even or like a contestable opinion on the songs, I, I don't think it overall, I don't think it's close. You can maybe go round by round and kind of compare. Like I would say for round one, I probably shouldn't drink a Coke before I did this video and ate a fucking four day old tacos. This shit, if you have a taco, that's what happens. I'm not even going to continue that lunch rant thought. Anyway, uh, round one was push-ups against Euphoria, in my opinion. I guess you can throw... You can throw uh, Taylor made and 16, sit 16 in there as well if you want to. Round one, uh, I think I already said this in a previous video, but I feel like... In terms of the burner tracks, the ones that just basically sat on IG and never made any further. I think I would take 16 over Taylor Made, even though Taylor Made was probably a more effective diss towards the opponent. Um, just the AI of Tupac and Snoop and just kind of almost making like a, a mockery of him a little bit, I feel like. I, I appreciate that from a strategic perspective. Uh, Euphoria is a better diss to Drake than Push-Ups is to Kendrick. That being said, as far as executing a diss of seven people, I feel like Push-Ups did that pretty well. So, I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, I'd give Euphoria probably a nine. Probably. I'd give Push-Ups, like... A nine as a, as a diss to seven people, but like in terms of Kendrick, it's like a, a seven, you know? Like it's not like a crazy diss to Kendrick. But his flow was tight. I actually had the beat for like an intro, uh, intro to a beef. Like I thought that was a decent beat, you know, all things considered. I, I think Euphoria, like if you go like listen to Euphoria, I mean, Kendrick's like bars in this has just been fucking incredible. Uh, like his 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 one liners, his his flips, the way he could just turn the subject and flip it on his head. I, I mean, it's just been as like good as ever been his entire like career. Like the headshot of the year, you better walk around like Daft Punk. Uh, have you ever played? Have you ever? Uh, what is it? The braids, like his delivery. I think even if Drake was, like, comparable as a lyricist to Kendrick, his delivery will never, like, even, like, scratch Kendrick's fucking gooch. It's just, it's, Kendrick may be the best in terms of just, like, very delivery, switch-ups, all that shit, just options out of any rapper in, in his generation. And I say that, like, there's some crazy guys, like, Danny Brown, um, you know, Tyler, the creator... Uh, this is a guy actually does some really good things to their voices over the years. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the top of my head. Obviously, there's a lot of great guys that you could probably throw on that, that, that list. But, um, you know, even, and now, but just just say, overall, Kendrick may be able to top that list in a very stacked generation of, of rappers. And, I mean, Euphoria, when you have him come in the way he comes in on Euphoria, you're like, okay, what the fuck are we getting here? Like, he can't just, like, like, sit this nigga down, like, spit, get, spit like, facts to him, like, hey, this is your fucking deviant or whatever, which he kind of ends up doing in a later song, but it just works, right? Like, I think Euphoria just works. 
And what that mean, like his intro, like you're like, okay, what the fuck? Um, Sister's Teen, I thought it was interesting. Like I like this the spoken word for like though those two I won't go too deep into those two songs, the burner ones, but like I, I like some of the kind of flows he does on Sister's Teen, some of the symbolic or melodic shit. Um and it's symbolic of him like singing like he could be like Drake or whatever, like trying to out sing Drake or whatever. Those songs are okay. I'd say Kendrick won that round, but it's like if that was the one where somebody wanted to give it to Drake or say it was Todd, like I'd be perfectly fine with those. The next round would be uh Family Matters <laughs> against Meet the Grams. And I guess um well we'll 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 throw not like us in round three. So just say this is round two. Yeah, it's not a I can't say it's not close. It's again another one of these things where I, I think Drake might have fucked up with making, even though I think Family Matters is a f even better version of what Push Ups was. And I mean, it literally is hinted at the, the end of Push Ups. So that's pretty much a continuation of what he was going with there. It's just, I think it, the more at time passed, I feel like it should have been a Kendrick only thing because we didn't really need to see him smoke Rick Ross again. We didn't just see him call Weekend gay in every single possible way. He could call Weekend gay without calling him gay. I mean, his wordplay in that was impressive, I guess. Like, you just, like, call him gay in every single possible other way and call him gay directly. Um, he basically pissed off Cash to the point where Cash put fucking shooters on his fucking house. I mean, it's incredible shit, like, in the writing sense. Like, it's incredible. Um, the video, like, that, that was his nuke. Like, people were like, what was the nuke? That was the nuke. The nuke was that. I think people started being delusional. The nuke was that. That that was entirely built up, composed. He did a music video for a fucking seven-minute song that has three different scenes in it and three different beats. I mean, that was his nuke. And it, um... I, I think from the jump, Drake thought that that song would have ended this entire beef. I think wholeheartedly... He expected that A, Kendrick didn't have much to go off of in terms of beef or a beef, a uh, dirt. And then, which, you know, you can, I guess we'll get into that later too. But, um, and then he also thought that he just was that nigga with what he had on Kendrick. Whether it's true or not, I don't fucking know. But he thought that he had what he had. So we get to it. And then it's the, it's the day free stuff, which pretty much hinted as what was going to come out. Based on, you know, the Whitney bodyguard in the previous song. It's the beating your wife angle. It's the, what was that fucking line? Uh, is it self-defense if she's bigger than you? I will say, as far as short jokes, which, you know, between tall women, like, kind of having their own, like, day in terms of, you know, TikTok trends and, and WNBA becoming, like, massive all these things that I think were really emboldened tall women in the last few years. Even though the fucking Netflix movie, Tall Girl. Between that shit and like incels and manlets and all that shit. I don't know if there's been any moment that's just been as encapsulating for like what tall or short niggas have gone through. Than, than, than this, this fucking, these lines on this song in particular. And on the previous one, but. I mean, the, the seven, I didn't mention the seven, uh, <laughs> the size seven tag on fucking Push With The Album, or the song cover. That was pretty, pretty funny, too. But, um, yeah, so we get Family Matters, and then we get it to where, like, just really making fun of Kendrick in a childish way, but a very effective way. I, I would say, like, just period, even as a beef, as a diss towards Kendrick specifically, I think it's, I think it's nine out of ten, really. I mean... That song is knocking most niggas at the ring. Like, I'm talking, like, hitting them, and they're pulling out the fucking ring. Like, fucking, uh, I think, I think that was Nate, uh, Nate Robinson, who got, like, punched out the ring. It was somebody relatively recently. I think that's what this shit was, right? I, I think against most niggas, that shit would have, like, second round KO were to, was that Cannabis who made that? Or was it Eminem? I don't know. It's one of the two. I think it was Cannabis. And, uh... 
The middle section is some of the best rapping that Drake has ever had in his career. Some of the best, like, just, you know, high higher tempo rapping he's ever done. I mean, just really fantastic shit. It should have been really a marathon, uh, a victory lap, you know. And uh, we get Meet the Grams, which... Uh, <laughs> Listen, man. I got to meet the Grams. I got the Shanley Matters. Unfortunately, I don't have fucking not like us, but I got those two live reaction. He he fucking smoked Drake, dude. Now I will say this is the one that I probably come back to the least out of like the major ones, the ones that are on streaming services and all that stuff, just because. Enough see enough seeds of doubt have been sown either between the tweets, uh, Drake's net song in this heavyweight battle. I don't know if I trust the third verse on on Meet the Grams. After the fact, I I don't know if I trust it. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. That being said, at the time. I thought it was, like, I thought it was GG. I'll be honest. At the time, I thought he won. I thought that was game. They not the, the daughter, um, the way he, like, sons Adonis, the way he, like, really, like, depicts uh, Dennis Graham's debauchery against Drake's own. Sonya, again, being, like, a fucking, uh, you know, not in any kind of domestic way, obviously, which... I guess I should definitely mention that in the context of this beef. Not even domestically, but it just becomes like a punching bag again uh, as what what happened in Story of Adidon. I mean, and then the way he just kind of like sits straight down at the end. Like, he talks to all the other Gramps and he comes to fucking Drake and he just sits that nigga down on a stool and just like fucking talks to him. I mean, I think it's almost similar. It's almost similar to the previous round in that like, I think Meet the Grams is like comprehensively better as a deef as a deef a deef a diss to Drake. I don't know why people want to say the word beef. A diss directly to Drake. I think it's comprehensively better. Maybe it's a lot it's a lot closer than the previous one, I will say that. Like if Meet the Grants was like a ten out of ten at the time I would have said eleven out of ten song at the time. Then like Family Matters is probably like as far as a diss to Kendrick, probably nine out of ten. So it's not that far apart. But um and looking back, I'd probably say like because we can't really prove one way or the other, like if anything is real between these two songs, what seems to make the most sense to me based on what has been public knowledge. Kendrick probably had a very aggressive like fallout with Whitney based on his own music and just stuff you can quite like look up easily. I don't know if Drake has an 11 year old kid. I, I don't. I don't. And then if you look past 11 year old kid, and the rest of the album is like more or less like the Kendrick version of Story of Added On, which we already heard say Story of Added On and is probably like a, a, be a better diss. So I don't want to give, like, I, I'm kind of like on a hating tip, I guess, a little bit right now. I don't want to give it to Drake, but like if I had to retroactively, I'd probably give this round to Drake. I kind of don't want to. Uh, <laughs> so I guess it'd be two rounds, but like, okay. And then you get to the third round where it's just like, it's over with. Like that, if there was a third round KO, uh, not like us, ended the beef and uh, more or less like ended like, I don't know how you could have respect for Drake as, a, as an artist or human being after that, that, that song. I think you'd have even less respect for him after hearing the heart part sits where he mentions uh, Millie Bobby Brown to get that fucking Whitney Houston line off or the Whitney, Whitney Houston slash Whitney Alford, you know, it's kind of like a double entendre thing. That was such a, <laughs> I get what he was going for and I respect the wordplay, but that was so fucking stupid, dude. That shit was horrible. All right. Now, not the song. But, like, the intelligence level of that song was fucking stupid. And um, Not Like Us is probably, like, the biggest bop that any diss song has ever been in the history of of rap music. So, 
that being said, um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because we all heard not like us. We all heard a hard part sits and Kendrick won the beef. Now, this is where this video becomes relevant. Um, 15 minutes in. What is like the outlook for this going forward? Because I honestly, in my heart of hearts, I don't think like this is it for this beef. I don't think Drake is going to just get fucking sunned in the public eye, drop some bullshit this, and just let that be it. Like, he, on his Scorpion album, basically, like, shelved half of what the album's going to be and, like, just inserted a bunch of shots at Pusha T and whoever else throughout that entire album. And it probably made the album significantly worse than what it was going to be before that whole beef got going. Drake is a very bitter, very, very bitter person when it comes to music. There is no fucking chance that, that man's going to get smacked the fuck up by the second biggest rapper in hip-hop. Have a number one hit be made, calling him a pedophile every possible way he called a pedophile. And just be like, okay, I dropped this shitty heart part of sense that just did nothing but basically attempt to debunk what Drake presented or Kendrick presented. And then I just roll off to the sunset, and I feel like I won. I know he has some memes and all that bullshit that Drake hides behind. Drake is going to be very, 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 very fucking pissed about that song for very, very many blue moons. And um, it's probably going to affect what type of music we get. I do think he will drop some hippy dippy bullshit a la like more life or whatever which i like i like the patois shit i like all that like I, I mean i'll be honest with you like it's i like it to a fault like i liked it in 2017 don't exactly like what i got a 2021 certified lover boy or honestly never mind but i appreciate that he he you know it, it could be good it's one of his very very many lanes that he's probably one of the best at it's just making a good Excuse me. Like the summer tune. Summer Games 2018 also pretty good. Um, after, because we know he's going to drop a bullshit project for streams or whatever, like every year basically at this point. Like he's just, he's like cursed himself into this infinite loop of having to drop more and more fucking music instead of letting this shit breathe even for a damn second. Uh, because you got to break more fucking Michael Jackson records and try to compete with Taylor Swift in some numerical way and all this non-musical, musical bullshit. Um, and I'm not being, like, I'm not being, like, mean to Drake or anything like this here. Like, I'm, I'm just saying this because, like, this is Drake's form. But, like, before the Kendrick stuff, I would told you the same thing. I'm just a cynic for people who make music for the sake of, like, records or numbers or... Basically, anything other than producing a decent fucking album slash song. And I just don't think Drake gives a fuck about making good music at this point. And I don't think he's given a fuck about that in quite a while. Um, I think he cares about producing enough stuff that lets him touch different endpoints of music. As in with Certified Lover Boy, you get a few conscious joints. Then you get a few joints for H-Town, and you get a few joints that are a little bit slower, you can pull, play in the whip, and you get all these different things that we don't want to hear. We just want a album of consistency, and instead we get, like, something that can stream well, something that can play in different countries, and all this. Mm, the, the formula, the Aubrey formula. And um, after that, I would imagine we get the Kendrick album, because I think best kept secret um Kendrick's probably gonna make an album he... I don't see why he wouldn't <laughs> I don't see after two number ones and him just choosing to allow himself to be graced with a spot on that future joint uh soon after you know first portrait shooters kind of got his his momentum um uh, I don't think he did that did that just to do it you know I do think that he legitimately like was asked by those guys who had their own agenda against Drake to hop on and join the Banana Boat Boys and just crush that nigga. But I also think, like, Kendrick, like, probably was like, hey, I turned down being on first-person shooters, which apparently that's, like, a common, like, 
I don't know. It's like above a narrative. It's like I don't want to say a fact, but like it's just a common thing that's been mentioned uh, on social media is that like Kendrick turned down being on first person shooters. He was asked to be on there and he just turned it down, um, which would make some sense, I guess. With like Drake, uh, with J Cole, like kind of mentioned him a few times, and even Drake like pretty much makes it like the. The victory lap for Drake and J. Cole, but like he obviously doesn't mention Kendrick. Like it's just bit two the way he puts it. So it makes sense in the context of that song that there, there meant to be another guy on that song. Um But he turned down as I understand, so I would think that he plans on making an album pretty soon here. Uh, I think maybe Keem plans on making an album pretty soon here. So those two seem to work in some level of tandem. It, it appears uh, there. I think I think Baby Kim was on PG PG Lang, so it makes sense that you want to get the label going with the two heavy hitters, kind of working in kind of uh, consistency here. Step and lock. What that album will be, I have no fucking clue because I don't think it will be a bunch of Drake disses, and I would not be surprised if it didn't contain any Drake references. I don't think Kendrick did any of this shit for clout chasing. I think between the 10 years of subs and smacking away first person shooter, the, the kind of hand that Drake extended, maybe even the olive branch that Drake extended, between, you know, all the shady shit that happened with, you know, Future and Metro Boom and all the other dudes that fucking like just don't like Drake. I think Kendrick saw it upon himself as like knock that nigga down a peg. And I think he wanted to do that for a fucking while. That pursuit, I think, is entirely different whatever he wants to do with this album. I think it's just completely different. I do think he wants to come into it with almost like a I'm that nigga now, unquestioned, uh, you know, kind of presence. So you had to do the beef first before you drop the album. But Kendrick doesn't need to fucking beef with Drake to sell a fucking album. Kendrick had Damn, which had all these fucking radio singles. I mean, the nigga had Good Kid, Mad City, that had, like, fucking five radio singles. He had Damn, that even, or, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, which had songs that charted well, and it's a fucking conscious album that's a goddamn concept project as well. Like, he doesn't need to fucking beef with this nigga to sell albums. Anybody who thinks that shit is fucking stupid and rotten in the fucking brain to think that Kendrick Lamar, the nigga with Pulitzer Prize, all these fucking Grammys, all this other shit that's, like, ephemeral and real value but means something when you consider like the stature of this nigga to like just general mainstream that nigga doesn't need to beef with fucking trick to sell goddamn music that being said he did i think want to get that finished and he it appears to be finished i think there might be a music video for not like us that exists out there at least i've seen it rumored heavily whether or not it comes out i don't know i would imagine that they're sitting on it just in case drake drops some shit in the next few weeks here but I don't know what, like, the aspiration date is on that. Because, like, if you drop it in, like, the middle of, like, you know, winter, like, will it really still matter? Probably not. If there's no further prov 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 provoking, I want to say provocation. Provocation from Aubrey probably doesn't make sense to really drop that. So I think they'll probably have it recorded. The same way they have, like, ten other discs recorded. But I think they'll probably sit on it if it never needs to drop, essentially. But I think Kendrick's album will be completely devoid of Drake shit. I do think Drake will like sub the fuck out of Kendrick on his album. That I think that's for a fact. Now, in terms of just kind of close out here because it's twenty three minutes. What do I feel like will be the future outlook of this beef? Like what what relevance does it have in like a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, and so forth? A year from now, I think if we get some more bullshit Drake music that just like does not play well. And we get, like, one more, like, certified hood classic from Kendrick. I, I think that we just end the big three shit. Like, I think J. Cole, like, bowed out of that. Like, I don't think you can consider J. Cole part of a big three. And I think the concept of the big three just, like, dies out, honestly. Like, I would not be surprised if this, if that sequence that I'm laying out here pretty much, like, ends the big three era. Because you'd have Drake... With, like, his fucking tail between his legs, ran away, dropped some more, you know, culture riding stuff, probably with, like, Tyler or some shit like that. Tyler, T-Y-L-A. 
or Tim's or whoever. Like, okay. And he just, like, pretty much accepts subservience to Kendrick. I think Kendrick proves that he still has it. Because I will say Damn isn't a classic. It's really good. In my opinion, it's not a classic. Although it is really good. Uh, and then Mr. Morale was just, like, to a lot of people. So, I think if he just says, like, okay, fuck you niggas. I can do this shit one more time if I want to. Or I can do this if I want to whenever. But, like, this is it one more time. And just, like, drops, like, super fucking rapidy rap Kendrick. Like, Rick and Mortis from fucking the Section 80 and all that shit. You know, Backstreet Freestyle. And just, like, shit some niggas one more time. It's like, fuck you niggas. And I'm going to go do whatever I want to do after this. I think that effectively ends the big three. I mean, we haven't gotten the fall off from fucking J. Cole. Fuck J. Cole. All right. I think that effectively ends... The era of the big three. The big three as a concept is finished. But the era, I think, ends with that. The problem is that still hoping that some nigga in rap can make a different era happen, which has failed to occur in the last at least 12 years. I would say, like, you had the definite big three with Kendrick kind of, like, came on with Good Kid, Mad City. You know, J. Cole kind of had a little bit of stature already. Uh, Born Center kind of, kind of like, cemented that with how many hit singles that one had. But, like, it just hasn't been, like, the only niggas you are even saying are in contest with that fucking position or are the niggas from their era. Like, people say Tyler, the creator, or, like, you know, or Kanye, like, which, that that's done, obviously. But, like, people like that, like, these niggas are as old or older than these niggas. Like, Tyler's 31, 32, 33 years old. Like, this nigga's fucking, he's, he's closer to that era of music than he is any of these new niggas in music and, and rap. So it's like, and all other dudes that like supposed to have been the, the SoundCloud generation, they got killed. Like, S is dead. Juice is dead. That, that would have been, your big three replacements would have been them niggas. S would have re effectively replaced Drake in hits, sounds, versatility, all that shit. That nigga got killed. Juice World was probably like the one of the top five biggest rappers on the planet. That nigga got killed, or you know, he died. But even you want to say Lil Peep, like Lil Peep was a pretty a pretty massive like. If you want to say like he was an internet like type rapper, a guy that kind of like didn't really have that much translatable value in re reality. Even though I'd say he did. It's just it's not to the general people who like decide big threes and stuff like that. You know, like white kids on like Adderall and shit like that, you know. He had real world value, just not to certain demographics. But mate, you could you could do a big three where you have S peep and, and juice. And that big three would have actually represented the late 2010s, early 2020s demographic a lot better than Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole did. Now, I'm saying this while, like, acknowledging that, like, a large amount of, like, traditional rap listeners are kind of, like, shown the door. If you say you have a big three of Lil Peep, SS, and Tassian, and fucking Juice World, like, really, Juice is the only guy that I think is, like, broadly acceptable to, like, your traditional, like, casual, like, hip-hop listener. I don't think you're really, like, having, like, some 12-year-old kid who... This stuff doesn't matter. We're like deciding like how much longevity a person has. I don't think some middle American kid. Well, I guess S S didn't have the means. Like S was big in the meme culture, so it was like a lot of twelve year old white kids from suburbia would have like fucked with S because of that. Looking me was huge. You know, sad was huge in a different way. I don't know. I, I just don't. I just don't know if. Like, if you think of market share, there's such a massive market share that Kendrick Drake. And uh, and J Cole have for both casual and like more active hip hop listeners. I feel like there's so many people that get left out with a J Cole or you know Peep S, you know, them, them dudes. Juice has like pretty broad versatility, but Peep like I don't know, I don't know, but I just I just think like based on kind of what the internet became but it evolved into what, how many people I think was brought into hip hop as listeners because like golf boy, click, uh, S 
um, emo rap in general, you know, kind of the way that music just transitioned. Uh, I, I just think that like they never really had a defined set of people that I think defined like that audience. Like Uzi would probably be in there as well, you know, probably above Peep, I would say. If I had Peep's placement, Trippy Red would have been there for maybe like a couple of months. I don't think I would ever have Trippy Red above Peep, even with like Pose 1469 and, you know, A Love Letter to You. I think it's two is the one with um, Pose and Deeply Scored and all that shit. I think Trippy had more like accessibility towards like mainstream people, but like Peep was bigger than Trippy. Like when the dude was still alive, Peep was bigger than Trippy. So it's like, it's hard to say at what point. Because Pete was, like, becoming, like, like, he had rock people fucking with him. Like, you know, like, rock artists. So eventually he would just start doing shit with, like, you know, like, just, you know, name your, like, emo rock or alt rock or punk rock. Or, you know, he would just be doing shit with, like, Legacy Acts probably at a certain point. And he would have, like, a Paramore feature by this point. If you were just realistic about it, he would have, like, a Paramore, like, Haley Williams joint by this point. If you consider that, like, there's no chance that Trippy would have ever, like, really caught up to him, you know. So, he's also more, like, legitimate than Trippy. Like, I think, I think people saw, like, Trippy's facade pretty quickly as far as the average music listener. So, I would say, like, maybe you have, like, a big four, maybe. Like, maybe just have Uzi and Peep kind of, like, in a certain sense. I don't know. I don't know where the fuck this discussion went to. But they, after one year, I think that's kind of what would happen with that. Five years later, I think we kind of sit there and ask ourselves, like, did that generation work the way we thought it did? Like, was it really ever a big three? Like, because I think that's just like a reactionary, like, oh, my God, Nikola Jokic had two bad games. And now has he really ever been a three-time MVP caliber type of player? And then, you know, Nikola Jokic has three good, great elite games in a row, and I was like, oh my god, well, yeah, Nikola Jokic did deserve his three MVPs, that's pretty much, like, I think I had it would have played out, like, if Kendrick really did just smoke Drake, and that was the end of it, but, you know, not like us, and nothing else really happened, I think some people would have been, like, looking at themselves, like, Drake was a real established run of, like, mediocrity for a while, while Kendrick had one, like, questionable album, and, like, discography that's damn near Damn near, like, sterling silver shiny. Like, if you really think about it, like, before Mr. Morale, his worst, like, almost studio quality, because I think Section 80 is a mistake, but, like, almost studio quality project is Section 80 is, like, 8 out of 10 at worst. Some people think it's, like, better than, like, damn and shit like that. And if you go past that, like, you have, like, just, like, really, really good fucking music. Really good music. Like, he has two albums that are amongst the best rap albums ever. Back to back. And one was his debut album, and the other was a follow-up. Like, he had Illmatic, and it was written. And that was, like, after he did, like, the... To a certain subsection. Like, I don't think, like, the high power movement and all that stuff is, like, black hippie. I don't think that was, like, huge to everybody in, in as a music listener across the nation. But, like... For California, at least, like, he was really reviving West Coast uh, tribalism in a way that, like, hadn't existed in, like, quite a few years. And his features was fantastic. They had placed for some very massive projects, or at least for massive artists. Like, this guy had everything fucking going on. And that's before he had the fucking Illmatic, it was written level, like, you know, kind of bop bop as his debut album, The Follow Up. I think it has, like, the highest-rated fucking hip-hop album to this, I think still to this day, on Metacritic. Uh, I think it's tied with MB MBTDF, I think. I think. Anyway. Number one, R.I.M. too, for hip-hop, you know, which means something with those fucking crackers. Uh, dude, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. No, R.I.M., they, they're take on hip-hop is fucking terrible, but, like, I didn't mean the crackers part, that's just a joke, anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, so, I think if five years later, we'll look back and, like, oh my god, like, Kendrick was way better than this thing this whole time, and we just kind of, like, did not give the nigga the grace of being able to kind of sit down for a while and just not make music, 
he had to just he had to just play by the fucking rules of modern music and just saturate the market with bullshit because that's how we think greatness should be evaluated. But if you look at just his discography, you could add up the best of J. Cole and Drake's together and this shit still doesn't approach Kendrick's discography and value at all. At all. It just doesn't. Like, you could just do... Especially if you do, like, post mixtape J. Cole. Like, it just becomes, like... If you go from, like, 2012 on, you got maybe, like... You have no classics... No classic albums at all. Like you have no classic albums between Drake and J. Cole at all. Between both of these discographies from 2012 on, it just disqualifies Take Care, which I don't know if it's a classic anyway, but that's at least it's only arguable one in my opinion. I don't think I don't think nothing was the same as even arguable. I think it's really good, but I don't think it's even arguable to be a classic. I think it has classic songs, but as a whole entire album, I can't say that. And then J. Cole obviously like KOD is the best you got. Like uh, yeah. Anyway, and Kendrick has like two bare minimum after 2012. It's just not from 2012 on, I should say. It's just not even close. Uh, 10 years. I think we just, I think we look at this as like one of the best beefs of all time, if not like the best, like post Nas Jay Z beef, like without question. Like, I think this just erases like the Eminem shit, the cannabis shit. The 50 Cent Ja Rule shit. I think it just like eliminates basically all of those beasts. Like as even in contention. It's just the best by far and it's not even close really in my opinion. I think you can say that now. But I think 10 years from now we look back at like. These are the tent poles of like 2000s hip hop for the most part. Like post you know Eminem, Nas, Jay-Z. Like kind of late 90s guys. As far as guys that really operated in the 2000s as a launching point. Like, these are the two tempos of music, or at least of hip-hop, and they just knocked out the park completely in the beef. Like, they played by the internet rules, they played by meme rules, they played by all these different rules of, like, internet culture, and they still came out and gave us, like, real-ass hip-hop. I think it's very impressive. If you consider, like, what music was like in the 2001, like, when Nas would say anything about Jay-Z... And even try to like lynch a like figure of Jay Z on Summer Sl- Summer Sam Summer what's it called Summer Jam Summer Jam I was gonna say Summer Slam with WWE and Jay Z could just like say like the lead condoms and fucking uh in Nas's like daughter's baby seat which was like those two things were like not tasteful at the time but like they would be like just they're not even an option nowadays like they were options that were like panned at the time or rejected. They are not options now. Like, Nas can call Jay-Z a slur every other bar in Ether. You can't, like, you can't even, like, really say... You can't even allude to certain things. Like, fucking alluding. You can't even say things that might be misconstrued to be allusions to certain things in these songs they're dropping nowadays. People put in, like, these phobias that, like, Drake and Hitter didn't really, didn't really go for, or... Well, I can't say they didn't because they, there's some phobias that, that you could say they maybe put in there, but like you're you're reaching right, like it's not obvious, and people were willing to pan those songs because of what they interpreted as being homophobic or transphobic or whatever. So like to play by the rules of like modern culture and still make some of the best disses we've ever heard, I think they got to get a fucking pound the back completely wholeheartedly. And I think that even though, like, 10 years from now, like, I think it'll probably still say Kendrick, like, beat the shadow of Drake overall in this beef. I do think that when we have both of them passing the back, very encouraging pass on the back for playing by the rules and still making an all-time great beef. I, I really think we will. Anyway, this is 40 minutes. I got to, like, just fucking upload or something. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this video, but it's going to come out at some point. I only did this video because I never did not like us and it just feels wrong to have not done some kind of recap of the beef because i feel like there's a, a, a hole missing where there should have been one more video and i don't think i would have done this if i did that video but it's time doing this video and now i'm just sleep deprived i can go to the fucking bed hope you enjoyed i enjoyed what the fucking beef did to my channel brought a lot of viewers a lot of subscribers all that stuff but really at the end of the day i did it because i like fucking hip-hop and i hope that we get more hip-hop moments that i could do videos on because we've had a dearth 
of those videos uh, or of those video worthy moments in hip hop for the last half decade. But hopefully the spirit is alive in hip hop again. That's all I can ask for. That's all I can fucking ask for. <laughs>